We're in Ridgecrest. We finally found a soft story building right here. In LA, the beach cities, we got a lot of soft story problems, but I am actually a little bit baffled. I don't understand how this building is still standing. Watch this. Right? There's a lot of gravity, probably about 27,000 pounds of compression on this post. Well, the entire area, it's about 300 square feet. You do the math, it's about 27,000 pounds, could be 30,000 pounds. But this post is barely making it. The connections from the on the top, that's hardly a piece of software we would find acceptable. On the ground, uh, same thing, you got a funky little anchor point there. When you touch this, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel very solid. Let's go to the opposite side of the building, I wanna show you what that one looks like. Check this out. There's nails holding a rotted piece of post up. Oh look, no nails there. I honestly don't understand how this building isn't on the ground. I mean, there's some uh, stress cracks and stuff on the stucco, but it's relatively minor. There are some hairline cracks on the stucco like that. There is a ton of spider cracking. Like when you break glass, it shatters into little pieces. Whatever lateral resistance this stucco was giving, it's gone. The next set of shaking, look, look at the entire wall, how it's all spider cracked. The entire wall, all of the stucco is broken into two by two pieces. I'm assuming that there isn't any plywood in there. In the city of LA and Santa Monica, they give stucco a sheer value, which means that stucco is gonna provide lateral resistance this way. This is what happens when stucco is the only means of lateral resistance. It spider cracks. The cracks are almost touching each other, right? They're like, they're, they're interwoven in the way that, so when they touch each other, when the cracks completely touch each other, the next step is that they'll fall off in chunk. You can feel the tension of the wood fiber humming up and down. This is grossly undersized for the weight that's on. See how they're almost connecting? There's like these little, the edges are connecting to each other. It'll continue to break like that until they connect and then they fall off. Let me show you this one over here, watch this. Problem is that they may red tag the building and make everybody move out. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I used to live right here, so I, I don't live here anymore, but. This is dangerous, right? Like, yeah, this dangerous, is dangerous. For sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. thank you. I, I, saw them, I saw them over there and I was like, can you come look at this real quick? Yeah, it's dangerous. Oh, yeah. So this is probably the third set of buildings. Probably we've looked at almost eight, nine buildings now. And one of the things that we've seen consistent is on the soft story buildings, when there's significant amount of weight and when it looks like the posts, the columns and the posts are not quite up to the right strength level, a tremendous amount of spider cracking occurs on the stucco. It's indicative of having a tremendous amount of lateral force put on that plane. So if you think of, of the opening, this entire building as a geometric plane, and it sh as it shakes this way and this way to a certain extent, it, it basically, these, these old cracks kind of illustrate it, right? They start to connect to each other. The little cracks start to connect to each other. Eventually, under enough stress, meaning a few more earthquakes, you should be able to, unfortunately, see large pieces of stucco fly off or break off and, and dangle. I always have worried about the buildings that are in LA, the connection between the dragline beam, which is this big header beam that runs the entire length of the opening, and a solid piece of wall. LA doesn't really require this connection to be exposed and assessed. But as you can see here, that's a fresh chip off, right? On the floor, you've got the pieces of chip that fell off. What that tells me is that connection has flex. And as part of the retrofit, that connection needs to be addressed. You gotta open it up and make sure that that's a strong connection. That'll work together as a system once you retrofit the entire drag line opening, right? So we have to start addressing this stuff. You know, maybe in a situation like this, um, and I'm just throwing ideas out, 
but in new construction you would have a plywood shear that would be two feet from the corner minimum all the way from ground to the bottom of the eaves there on both sides of the corner now i understand why people don't want to necessarily do that because it's expensive but what's the alternative you're going to spend all of this money on retrofitting the drag line opening and then you're going to have this insane connection on the corner which by the way is the weakest part of the building it's the part that you should pay some of the most attention to because you really get a lot of your strength from here and here. A lot of my thoughts, a lot of my hypothesis about my observations on the shake test are being illustrated here in the, in the field, right? So this is ideally what we wanted to learn. So now we're gonna head over to the neighboring city which suffered more damage to structures. So we're gonna go check that out and see how those things broke. So stick around. <laughs> 